This August, a group of young men and women will face one of the most challenging periods of their lives. They'll graduate from medical school and start working as junior doctors. There's always stuff that you can, you can do better. Certainly as students, you, you, you sort of wander around the wards and you see things, um, but you, you're not sort of given free leash on, on doing that much. You, you realise how much you don't know when you do something like this. At University Hospitals Coventry and Warwick, there's a man who helps med students gain vital practice in dealing with emergencies. Hello, Matthew. My name's Tom. This is Jyoti. We're finding the medical students. Oh, hello. What's what's going on, mate? I just can't breathe. I just need to do something. All right. It's really well, bad. You're in the right place, so don't worry. He's a sim man, an animatronic patient simulator. Okay. But the students just got him Matthew. So what I'm doing is operating the simulator and changing the responses and the parameters and depending on what they do. How are you doing? How's the oxygen? Is there any difference? I don't know. It's, just, it's really bad. They will be asking me questions and I'll be responding as the patient. So if they treat the patient properly, the patient gets better. If they don't, the okay, patient doesn't. Doing doing. It can be quite scary, depending on how they do. Just open your mouth for me as wide as you can. From a realistic point of view, it's really good. You're presented with a, a situation that you don't really know huge amounts of background about the patient um, or about the scenario. The stress and the tension that's associated with it, um, it is quite a lot. Working with Steve and his patient simulator is clinical teaching fellow Dr Ruth Francis, a specialist in medical education. That CO2, is that a reassuring CO2 or a worrying no. CO2? Well, less than seven we really want to worry. Um, and I think I'd still give ITU a call. Okay. We've taken some bloods okay. as well. Um, have we done the glucose? We haven't done glucose yet, so we really need to do glucose. That's a good point. You can make mistakes and it doesn't matter, and you can learn from them, and then hopefully when it comes to it in real life, it's um, going to go much more smoothly. Just going to give them cool. yep. some IV hydrocortisone. Okay, I'm just okay. going to pop this in. If I give you that. We can, we can stop there, yeah? Right. Okay, fine. Is he dead? No, he's still alive. <laughs> After the simulation, the teaching continues next door as the students watch back their performance with Ruth. How do you think that went? It felt quite calm. We didn't panic. We didn't panic. <laughs> no, you look, you look quite calm. We are working quite well, but we're not communicating well. If everyone else in the room knows exactly what you know, yeah. and you can say, I think it's this, do you agree? Yes. And then you've got that exchange of ideas. True. So it's just about communicating those findings so that you both know exactly what's going on and you're in the, on the same page. You think you know it, and then it comes to actually practicing it, and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> where did it go? So that's why it's really good to practice on a fake patient. <laughs> 